Hello and welcome to News Click. We are midway into the election season and the past 15 to 20 days have seen the usual complement of bizarre and even offensive statements, many of them made by leaders of the ruling BJP. But what stands out amid all this is a tweet by the army a couple of days ago, which said that its expedition team has discovered evidence of the mythical beast known as the Yeti and that it had found footprints of this beast. So to talk more about this, we have with us Prabir Purkai, sir. Hi, Prabir. Prabir, to start with, how exactly do you evaluate this tweet that this mythical beast has been discovered, especially considering the army says this is to excite curiosity and spur scientific temper? Well, let's look at first whether it's a beast, because after all, we've been calling it the abominable snowman. Right. Therefore, it's supposed to be a human, uh, quasi-human mm -hmm. uh, creature. Right. Therefore directly could be even our cousin. So that has been the argument that Yeti is a really not a beast but a cousin of the human race. Mm -hmm. This is not something which is peculiar to India. It's been there in other places right. as well. You know, we have the Bigfoot and uh, the Yeti which sort of complement each other mm -hmm. in terms of what people have been saying. Now in this particular case, of course, it's election season. So also the silly season, therefore, a lot of silly things being said. I'm not talking about the offensive ones, right. but it also appears that this is also part of now what the BJP sees as its election campaign. Right. The, now we have a, a Bala court strike. Now we have a second strike in Nepal right. that the Indian army discovers the Yeti. I think one part of it is that the army should have been very careful about what it is saying. Because after all, this is not their natural habitat. Right. Uh, it is where the Nepalese army should certainly be far more comfortable. And they have now come saying it that, you know, hey, it's a this is really a bear. This is not a right. uh, yeti or any of this. And they have openly discounted what the Indian army has said. So that's, that is one part of it. So I think this this is, uh, shall we say, uh, an overreach by the Indian Army mm -hmm. expedition which had gone there, mm -hmm. which tweeted this uh, footprint and claimed, tried to claim some glory for itself for finding the Yeti. Mm -hmm. We're also unaware of the history of what has happened, right. what have been the research which has been done on this, a long history of what uh, the what shall we say, the experts who have really investigated the story have done mm -hmm. over the last 10-15 years. Mm -hmm. And this is, this is not something which is now purely a, shall we say, mythical uh, beast, which people have said as their folklore that right. they have seen. This has been investigated, various claims of the Yeti have been examined, genetic evidence has been seen of the so-called Yeti hairs, which have been found in different places and are supposedly available in museums and right. so on. Right. And the conclusion has been that it is really a species of Himalayan bear right. that we are talking about, mm -hmm. which is identified as the Yeti right. quite often. And sometimes it's the brown bear, sometimes the Himalayan black bear, related species whose foot footprints have been mistaken for a human footprint. Right. Now, there are two things in addition to that which, you know, we can bring out. One is the size of the footprint. Exactly. It was 35 inches. Mm -hmm. Now, here is the issue. Army should have been conscious that if it's a species which is allied to the human species, then the footprint of 35 inches would be that it's about 10 times the human size. Now, uh, we have... Uh, footprints of, for instance, for instance, the fossil footprints of the T-Rex, which, as you know, is considerably larger among the dinos dinosaurs than the human species. And one of the footprints which is there as fossil is 29 inches. Right. So to have a 35-inch uh, footprint itself have cautioned the Indian Army that this is perhaps not really a human footprint, but it could be something else. What that something else could be has been explained by one of the experts, Daniel Taylor, who has examined uh, the Yeti stories over a period of time. Mm -hmm. And he says the bear have a peculiar gait. They essentially land their hind feet on their footprint of the front uh, paw, rear paw and the front paw go together because they put the footprint one above the other. That's what they tend to do. And if they're going up the slope, then of course the one, the rear paw footprint is little 
after the front paw footprint and that gives it an elongated shape right. and that makes it look it's a much bigger footprint than it really is mm -hmm. and then it also resembles somewhat the human footprint. Right. He's also said there's probably a bear cub which is hopping behind the mother mm -hmm. and because the bear cubs tend to hop and they also landed, the bear cub also landed on the mother's footprint right. and therefore this 35 inch mm -hmm. artificial footprint being created. Mm -hmm. So I think a little more, uh, shall we say, caution on that count. Also talking to the Nepalese colleagues, mm -hmm. the Nepalese colleagues talk to the, you know, the re villagers or the people right. living nearby, all of them would have t in indicated that this is something that they, sh they should not rush to claim right. as a yeti fruit footprint. Right. But this is also part of a larger pattern, so to speak, when institutions across the country are jumping into these kinds. So we have the Indian Science Congress, for instance, making these kind of grandiose claims. And this is yet another part of the pattern. So. Well, we could say there's a part of the pattern, but we expect when we say the army should not be politicized, mm -hmm. the army should also not descend into this kind of right. claims. Right. And if we talk about scientific temper, they should really consult even their colleagues who have some scientific knowledge about the subject. Mm -hmm. You know, there were two years back, it, in fact, uh, there is a detailed uh, study right. which is done by a group of scientists. Mm -hmm. We have reports of that available which talk about what are the samples they have examined. Mm -hmm. And as I was talking about, there have been these samples which have been kept in different places. And it included samples of hair, it included what is scat, in other words, shit, and various other things beside. Mm -hmm. And all of them came to the conclusions that this were different species of bear mm -hmm. as the most, you know, the most of the samples that, that came, right. but from basically different species of bears. Right. So this issue of bear being mistaken for yeti is not a new one. Mm -hmm. And if you see the evidence across, even on the Bigfoot, the Sasquatch, yes. as we were talking about. Even then, the confusion is with bears. Mm -hmm. And now, Daniel uh, Taylor. Taylor has explained why the footprints of bears tend to look this big. Right. And therefore, the reason to think of big footprints must be of a bigger, quote-unquote, uh, human species. That's where the whole thing comes from. Mm -hmm. So this has already been examined uh, Daniel Taylor himself spent 35 years in this uh, Makalu uh, Barun right. National Park in Nepal. Mm -hmm. He looked at different species of bears and he probably is the best living expert on quote unquote yeti uh, myths and right. yeti remnants shall we say. And if they had exercised a little bit of caution on this count, mm -hmm. They would have been. They would have spared themselves of a lot of embarrassment. You know, I remember when I saw the Yeti uh, story in the papers, and I was very sure that this is a, a blooper that they are making. I remember still the 2017 paper, mm -hmm. which is the Royal Society uh, paper, which came on this issue, and there's a comprehensive account of how the bears are being mistaken for Yeti, right. and how genetic evidence has also been found to show this. In fact, the Yeti story had a unexpected windfall in a different way. Because this uh, genetic evidence was collected, mm -hmm. it was also found that Tibetan brown bears and the Himalayan bears, which are in the Makalu uh, Barun National Park, they have deviated much earlier than the, they were thought to have okay. deviated. They also found mitochondrial uh, DNA. Mm -hmm. And all of this was very interesting because this is a species which is not very easily observed. Right. It is very high up. It also is in regions which are not very well populated, so it's very sparsely populated. So knowing the history, even the genetic history of these uh, of these bears is a very interesting exercise by itself. Mm -hmm. But that's really science. Right. It's not speculation because you found one footprint right. on the ice and then you built up a whole, uh, shall we say, mountain out of a little molehill, right. in this case from a footprint into the Yeti. Right. Thanks, Prabhu. Let's also take a look at what Daniel Taylor had to say about the Yeti. I needed to use this photograph in my book. 
And so I kept writing to the Royal Geographical Society saying, can I have permission to use this photograph? And they, for four months, they didn't answer my messages. And I'm saying, what's going on? I called them on the phone. Oh, we'll get to it, we'll get to it. We're having some problems here in London. And then finally, I get a message. When my editors at Oxford are all upset, why isn't this here? It's holding up publication. And they say, Professor Taylor, which photograph do you want? <laughs> now, mind you, I have been looking at Yeti photographs since 1956. I've got a file this thick of Yeti articles and documents. I had never seen this photograph. To the best of my knowledge, it's never been published. And I am months away from the release of the book. And as soon as I see this photograph, which is essentially the same as this photograph, come on, it's essentially the same, but look at this. As soon as I see it, I jumped out of my chair, I called to my sons, I called to everybody because this was what was extraordinary. Can you see these scratch marks? There's proof positive there that it's bare claws. And I said, what a gift! You spend 60 years searching for the Yeti, and as your final book is going to press, you find the mysterious photograph that he shows that even the original picture is the truth. No. That only answers one Yeti question. We want to come back to the icon and the idol. Because I'm still looking. And I will be 73 years old next year, and I'm going to go into some special valleys that I'm not going to tell you about. But it's like what I did in 2010. May 2010, I returned to the Saldima Meadows of the Barun Valley. Accompanying we were my two sons, both now men. Jesse Oak was returning to jungles where in life-opening ways he first entered the wild. Luke Cairn came to the mountains he had been traveling in by then for years, doing his own research. We had returned because my Yeti quest continues. Two Yetis exist. Each has a different identity. The maker of the footprints is the bear. That identity is certain. Beyond the footprints maker, though, is a second yeti, one asking existential questions about Homo sapiens' relationship with the wild. And to those questions, each person needs to answer individually. To help with that, the yeti is a symbol, as a symbol, is given to discover one's own footprints. This is far from an abominable search. That's all we have time for today. Keep watching NewsClick.